am here in the Big Apple celebrating the Windy City. I am. Confused? Don't be. We're in New York for the opening night of the Bob Fosse revival, Chicago, on Broadway. I'll be talking with the play stars, B.B. Newworth and Anne Ryan King. We'll be bringing you all the excitement of an opening night party. So join the party next, right here on E. Steve Kometko at New York's Mirage Club, just a high kick away from Broadway for the opening night gala of the legendary Bob Fosse's Chicago. Rumor has it that some of stage and screen's biggest stars are going to be here tonight after they watch Anne Ryan King, B.B. Newworth, Joel Gray, and James Naughton on the boards at the Richard Rogers Theater. This version of Chicago has traveled a long and winding road. It started in the 1920s with a play Chicago by Maureen Dallas Watkins, which in turn provided the plot for both the 1928 movie Chicago and the 1942 film Roxy Hart, which starred Ginger Rogers. Bob Fosse ran with it and opened his musical version of Chicago in 1975, and now it's back again, being directed by Walter Bobby. It's about murder making someone a star. Is it life imitates art or art imitates life? Let's take a closer look at the play. It's a brilliant show because it's an evening of vaudeville. Oh, Very fussy. We have the most erotic, sexy girls. It's the show Broadway's been buzzing about for months. The revival of Bob Fosse's Chicago. The four leading actors are incredible, which is Anne Ranking, as you know, B.B. Newworth, Joe Gray, and James Norton. It may sound hard, but all I care about is love. If hype is any indication, Chicago will set New York on fire this time around. Chicago's coming back to Broadway because it's a great show. B.B. Newworth stars in the revival, which first opened on the Great White Way in 1975. It might have made a much bigger impact if not for another little hit back then called The Chorus Line. But 21 years later, and after much critical praise, Chicago is back. It's a brilliant show because it's an evening of vaudeville. Now, we don't put this in the 20s. We don't make this a time period. It is constructed as a vaudeville evening. There's one number after another after another. The gym is cold, but the piano's hot. We have a fantastic director, Walter Bobby. I'm Walter Bobby. Who understands the impetus of the show. I hired myself to direct. I picked it, and then I hired myself as the director. <laughs> Hello, ETV. Our director is a ham bone. And very soon after that, I asked Anne Reinkin if she would join me in the project and choreograph it. When I was asked to choreograph this, I, I felt that it had to be done in the Fosse vocabulary, and that, uh, you know, I mean, the concepts are the concepts. I mean, the, the, you can't reconceive a number, otherwise you, you'd have to rewrite it. Joel Gray star of another Fosse classic, Cabaret, returns to Broadway as Amos Hart. Murderer? Why, just last week, the jury thanked the man for shooting a burglar. My character is the only innocent in the entire piece. Everybody is corrupt, except for Amos. The story of Chicago remains untouched. Flamboyant lawyer James Naughton defends celebrity client Anne Ryan King in a highly publicized murder trial. Lots of glitz, lots of celebrity, Ring a bell? First of all, just in terms of its, its theme about uh, justice, the corruption of justice. It's odd. Uh, Chicago's been relevant no matter what decade you do it in. People are responding to it. You know, to that, this whole, we have a big courtroom scene, and uh, it's not unlike the O.J. Simpson feeding frenzy. Art, life, life, art. I don't know. <laughs> the show, I think, is as funny and sexy and fresh as anything, I mean, I think more so than anything I've seen recently. So I think it's, I think it's one of the most satisfying musicals you could go see. Okay. It was a great audience. We love our show. We were ready to open. We had been previewing, it seemed like, for six years. And joining me right now is Mr. Donald Trump, fresh from Chicago the Musical. Give me a critique. I thought it was terrific. They did a great job. Really a good production. 
Now, originally, it opened in 1975 in that same theater with Gwen Verdon and Cheetah Rivera. Does it hold up today? It's 21 years old. Well, I didn't see it then, but I will tell you that I don't see how it could have been much better. I mean, I think tonight's performance was fantastic. Everybody, it was just absolutely great. What kind of a um, feel would you say this has? It's a musical comedy, granted, but not your standard run-of-the-mill musical comedy. Well, that's right, and there was a certain level of, it was comedy, but there was a great level of sophistication to this musical. It was really very beautiful. They did a great job. You don't see dancing like that very often. This is Bob Fosse's original choreography, and Anne Re and Ryan King staged it again for this production. Um, it's the kind of thing you miss on the stage, isn't it? Well, I, I miss it, and uh, I haven't seen anything that I've enjoyed this much in a long time. I mean, it really has been a long time. I, I almost, like, let's not go. I've loved certain musicals over the last few years, but generally speaking, this would, I think, be just about the best I've seen in a while. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the rest of the Thanks evening. Have a good, good, good seeing you. What's in the mix when it comes to cooking up a Broadway musical masterpiece? Well, you've got to have a great story, music you can move to, and stars that bring lots of cheers, like B.B. Newworth. When we return, we'll meet this Broadway lady and see how a show like this comes together. Don't go away. I had a wonderful time. It's, we've worked so hard on this show, and we're all so proud of it. It's such an honor to be in it, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Welcome back to East coverage of opening night of Chicago the Musical. With me right now, one of the show's stars, a driving force, a choreo the choreographer, right. Anne Ryan King. Congratulations. Thank you. How does it feel now that the opening night is behind you? Great relief, and it feels good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You were in the original production. Yes. Well, actually, Gwen Verdon was in the original right. production, and I replaced Gwen. 21 years later. Yeah. How different is it um, for you? For me, um, I think I'm better at it. I think it's made for somebody who has a little bit of life underneath their belt and uh, seems to have more meaning for me. It was always one of my favorite roles, and it still is. Tell me, we've been talking earlier this evening about a Bob Fosse musical. Yes. What characterizes a Bob Fosse musical? Oh, great style, great wit, um, really intelligent, and um, unlike yes, anything it else. Oh, it's yes, and it's sexy. But unlike anything else, it's, did you have fun uh, doing the choreography? Yes, very much, very much. I hope I respected his work well. I it's think quite so. a responsibility. I don't know how you're going to do this every night of the week. It's a tough show on you. Well, I can eat without guilt <laughs> and without worrying. Congratulations! Thank it's you your so evening. Much. I'm certain you're you're anxious to get into a round of applause. Thank you. Have fun. Thanks a so lot. Okay. We'll be back with a little bit more after this. We're going to check in with some other folks here. At the party. Well, we were just told that we're on the front page of the New York Times. I mean, A1, so we can't believe it. And I think a lot of the critics are with us, at least we hope so. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Audiences will just adore it. It's uh, great choreography, sexy, and uh, full of passion. And Anne Rankin is just lovely, and BB and Joel Gray, he's a darling, and he's just fabulous. And great, you'll love him. In the show, BB Newworth stars as Velma Kelly, Roxy Hart's jailbird partner in song and dance. Who would have thought that uptight Dr. Lilith Sternan from Cheers could move like that? B.B. Newworth scorches the Broadway stage as jailhouse femme fatale, Velma Kelly, in Chicago. The first number that I do, all that jazz, a little bit of that, and um, mostly just uh, slinking around like a very guilty murderess. Taking out a Bob Fosse classic was a labor of love for this multi-talented performer. It's a fantastic score. It's a really smart, very, very, very good book. And the choreography is intrinsic in the telling of the show is although Anne Rankin choreographed it it is in the language of Bob Fosse and there's nobody better than Bob Fosse great care was taken to recreate his vision and BB couldn't be more pleased 
It is constructed as a vaudeville evening. There's one number after another after another. There's a ventriloquist, which is the press conference with the lawyer and his client, and he's doing all the talking, and she's just mouthing the words. Bibi is no stranger to Broadway. I've been on stage since I was seven. I'm never more at home than I am when I'm on a, a live stage in the theater. There is nothing that can compare in any way to the experience of performing live on a stage. It's, it's, um, that's what, I mean, I can breathe. When I come into the theater, that's when I'm breathing. And um, I just love it more than anything. With talent and spades, the possibilities are endless. I don't regret having done the television or the movies and at this point, I, I think, you know, I'm sort of like a performer for hire. I can dance, I can sing, and I can talk. And what do you want me to do? And joining me right now is the director of Chicago the Musical, this edition anyway, Mr. Walter Bobby. Nice to see you. What do you think? Uh, have you heard any buzz from the critics yet? Uh, I've heard the New York Times is pretty good, but I haven't looked at it. I understand USA Today had a nice article, although it wasn't a review, but it was a nice uh, complimentary article on the musical. Um, tell me about the staging. We were talking a little bit earlier about how spare it is in comparison to some, some shows. Why did you choose to go in that direction? I think um, when Anne Reinking and I got together, Fosse was such a, he was a minimalist, an early minimalist. And it seemed that we wanted to make the entire show kind of a tribute to his career. And so it seemed to, to go that way. I also feel that it's a really a, a performer-driven piece, that what you want to focus on are these people and their stories. So I didn't want to see a lot of stuff, and we just followed our instincts and went there. We keep talking about uh, a Bob Fosse musical. What is a Bob Fosse musical? He, became, he was such a great stylist, and I think by the time he got to Chicago, there was a kind of dance vocabulary which was uniquely his. And when you start to look at m most writing, you look at the, the, the lyrics and the music, but once you start to look at a Fosse show, you also have to look at the dance. He's essentially one of the writers, you know. He's an author of the dance and the style of dance. And so it becomes integral to not reinvent the show, but in a sense go back and pay tribute to that vocabulary, which is what Anne Ryan King did. It would be like trying to do a uh, chorus line and not do Michael Bennett's choreography, or not to at least pay tribute to that style. So it's, a sa it's the same approach that we took. Now you had Joel Gray, Anne Ryan King, B.B. Newworth, James Naughton, I'm a lot of awards in there. I'm a lucky man. Did you have to direct, or did you just sit back and say, do it? You know, sometimes you walk into the room and you think, if I get them on and off the stage, how bad could it be? And certainly with those four, I think the entire company, I mean, even the dancers, uh, the top shelf of Broadway dancers, it's an extraordinary company. I'm very lucky. Marsha Lewis, too, David Sabella, you know, extraordinary. But Joel, I was so honored when he said yes. I mean, I called him and I said, would you do this? It's, it's, it is, uh, it's not a huge part, but you can make it important. And I think he has, he's dazzling in the show. Best of luck to you. It was a, a joy to see it. And uh, this is your party. Go enjoy. Thank you. Putting on a Broadway musical, of course, takes a big cup of creativity, an equal measure of talent, and more than a dash of determination. We'll have more on the Broadway recipe for success, along with the men who light up the Windy City when we return. Wait a minute, I gotta be on that side right now. Get all wrong. Train me better. No. Joining me right now is James Naughton, 
from Chicago, the musical. And since he's so nice and he's going to sit here and do this, I thought I'd let him do the welcome back. Welcome back to the opening night of Chicago here in New York. Does that make sense? Well, what really makes sense is that James Naughton is one of the stars of Chicago, and he's with us right now. And here he is. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Here's me with more. <laughs> so how do you feel? Well, um, it, it's a pressure cooker. We've been... Hey, wait a minute. Yesterday you told me tonight the pressure's off. Yeah, we, well, we've been pressure cooked. And tonight the pressure's off. We're finally out of the pressure cooker. That's what I was going to say. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. I'm just a little slow, that's all. I'm, <laughs> I'm beginning to kind of enjoy it. How did it feel up there on stage tonight? How long does it take you on opening night to get into the swing of things? Or do you hit your stride right off? Well, if you know the show and you know what my introduction is, it doesn't take long when you hear that. I sit, I sit backstage and listen to the girls go, we want Billy, and I hear, we want Jimmy. And, then it's not, it's not so hard after that. <laughs> well, you know how to make an entrance. I'll give you that much. Uh, the show is constructed in such a way that it, it's a great part. As they say, you know, I took a great part, so I, I did it. Do you like being on the boards? Yeah, I do. People always ask, you know, which do you like better, doing a movie or doing a TV show? Or, and I always say, well, I, I always like better what it is I'm not doing at the moment. If you're on the board, you go, oh, boy, sure would be nice to be working five days a week and doing a little movie. And if you're doing a movie, you go, oh, to be on the boards again. So anyway, yeah, this is and this is about as good as it gets. And Ryan King and Walter Bobby did a terrific job of uh, staging this. And their uh, intent was to be true to the spirit and legacy of Bob Fosse. Do you think they succeeded? Well, I, I didn't know Bob Fosse. Uh, I've seen his work. My agent, Sam Cohn, who was a very, very close friend of Bob Fosse, says Bobby would be pleased. So, and I know that Annie's done a, a terrific job, and so has Walter. And I've known Walter for 20 years, and I worked with Annie for the first time 10 or 12 years ago in the Williamstown, uh, at the Williamstown Theater Festival. Um, there's nothing not to like about this experience. Well, I promised you something, and I'll get it for you as soon as I finish this. Stay here one second. James Naughton is just one of the men of Chicago. Joel Gray, a veteran of the Broadway stage, is another. Take a look. Joel Gray plays Amos, Roxy Hart's amorous husband, who gets swept up in a storm of controversy in the Windy City. Some people might think he's not too bright. I kind of look at him as sort of a pure soul who is driven to do the things that he does, the naive things that he does, by this tremendous love for Roxy Hart. The reason that I'm in this show is that it's so damn good. It's one of the, the great scores. It's been looked at with a very fresh eye by Walter Bobby. But it was always material that was, that was remarkable. Director Walter Bobby and writer Fred Ebb think Gray's the one who's remarkable. Joe is a very thoughtful actor, a very thorough actor. And uh, he has a definite concept of who Amos is and how Amos would behave. And he brings all that. And I think there's a great artistry in that. It is not a big part, but it is an important part. And I can't tell you how pleased and honored I was when Joel says yes. And he, he has, his presence changes the story. I'm thrilled. I really am thrilled. It's wonderful to have an old friend in the show. Uh, and to be received the way, uh, see him being received the way he's being received in Chicago is like, you know, all my pals making it. And, I, and you're happy to watch that. The art comes first, of course, but Gray admits that there are other perks to the job. We have the most erotic, sexy girls that I've ever, and I've worked, you know, in Cabaret, we had a lot of, but they were in period costumes so they didn't really have their full flower this is so contemporary not only are they beautiful and sensuous and erotic they are so talented every one of these girls is an actress and a singer and a dancer and a person who knows who they are according to this tony award winner the theme of chicago can be summed up with one musical phrase what you just heard that lyric razzle dazzle them and they'll make you a star. 
No content, no goodness, no kindness. Just give them glamour, and you'll win. Coming into the party right now, one of the show stars, Miss B.B. Newport. Looking sensational. I hate to interrupt you for the umpteenth time on your way in. I'm fine. The question is, how are you? I'm great. How did you go tonight? It was really fun. We had a fantastic time tonight. What's opening great night audience. like? How long into the show before oh, we... Uh... Oh, boy. Until we get saliva back yes. in our mouths? <laughs> Um, it took me until after the opening number, then I got the saliva back in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry to be so gross. No, not gross at all. I, I understand entirely. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's, for me, it's happy nerves. It's not, I wasn't scared nerves. I love the show. I think we have a fantastic production. I was anxious to give the show and, you know, open it up and let everybody see it. You know what I mean? And um, so it's a, it's a happy thing that takes us a while. A lot of good energy in here tonight. A lot of people uh, really buzzing about the show. I understand the uh, New York Times reviews are, are fairly nice. Good. Really nice. Well, I, uh, personally, I don't read them. Okay. Now or ever, okay. but I'm glad to know they're good. I won't tell you. <laughs> um, how would you describe this show? It's a musical comedy, but it's dark. Well, it's musical theater, yeah. It is uh, it is dark, but it's, it's quite funny. And for some bizarre reason, I feel it's very uplifting. I don't really know why, but it is. I mean, you know, some people describe it as being cynical, but I think that that implies a certain kind of um, mean-spiritedness, and it's not at all. It's, it's, a, it's a very happy show, I think. It's really, um, it's very satisfying in every way. It's intellectually satisfying, it's visually satisfying, it's sexually satisfying, it's just my, my, my. Well, it's a very sexy show, but it's very smart and very, very well uh, written and put together. And the music is fantastic. I mean, jokes are there. Who just came? I don't know. I can't see. <laughs> They'll talk to we'll me soon, I'm sure. Yeah, one last question. Yeah. How much do you love being on the stage at shows? More than I could possibly ever say to you. It's just, it's the best place to be. Instant feedback. Well, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not that. I don't, I don't really know what it is. I've just been doing it since I was seven. I've been on the stage and I don't really know what it is, but it doesn't have to do with the applause and it doesn't have to do with all that. It's, it's something else that I just, frankly, really don't know how to say to you. Congratulations. Best of luck with the show. This is your party. Go in and have a good time. Even if you don't like applause, I have a feeling there's going to be someone to walk in. Have a good time. We're going to check in with some other people's opinions as we uh, look around the party. Sensational. I never was. I never was almost Bob Fosse. There was only one Bob Fosse. He, I think, he would have been delighted. Absolutely delighted. I thought that. I thought everybody did an excellent job. And I think the show, uh, aside, you know, it, it was all reverence to Gwen. The, the rest of the show, I thought, had come up a great deal. Really, a great deal. Nanny, of course, is, is she's the best. Song and dance are crucial to a musical, but so is the dialogue. That's right, the interplay between characters. And we've got lots more interplay between all the real-life characters here tonight. More interviews, more fun, more Chicago still to come. What's got song and dance, murder, and celebrity all in one theater? I'm tempted to go for the cheap joke and turn to the headlines, but instead I'll say Chicago the Musical. It taps right into the uh, media frenzy we all know so well. It centers around Roxy Hart, who, thanks to her media-savvy lawyer, becomes famous when she murders her lover. So, in a way, a look back at the 20s is kind of like taking a look at the present, and presently, Let's look back at who stopped to talk to us before the show. 
This is Ben Vereen and Gwen Verdon. Welcome and uh, thanks for joining us on E! News Daily. Now, Thank you for being here tonight because it's so important yes. that the world should see that Annie Rankin has done something magnificent. And thank, so thank goodness you. she came back and, and is performing. Yes. She didn't perform for now, quite both a of you, Both of you had a very close relationship with Mr. Fossey and this yeah. musical yeah. is something special to both of you, isn't it? You were very, in the original in yes. 1975, Miss Burton. Is that what it was? Yes. I never know when. Oh. <laughs> and I was right next door in a show called Pippin. <laughs> for which you won the Tony Fund, Yes, correct? I did. Yes, I did. Well, what, what can the audience expect to see tonight? An absolutely extraordinary show and performers. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing something which I saw the beginnings of happen again because I'm on the board of City Center and we did it originally as an encore production and it was wonderful and very successful then so I can only think it'll be even better now. What is an opening night like on Broadway? It's exciting. It's total excitement. And when you see a Broadway opening night, the show, you know that it'll be fine-tuned. They leave nothing to chance. I can't wait to see it. It'll be exciting and full of energy. B.B. Newworth is a very good friend of mine, as is Marsha Lewis. We did Grease together on Broadway, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. I saw it yesterday. I had great fun. It's a wonderful show. I actually saw it up when they did it in City Center, and uh, it's one of my favorites. I remember I saw it with Gwen Verdon uh, way back when. In 1975? Yes, I did. Gwen Verdon and Cheetah Rivera. Cheetah Rivera, that's right. Terrific choreography. Bob Fosse, you know, nobody better than him. Without the gentleman who's sitting right next to me, the producer of Chicago the Musical, there wouldn't be a Chicago the Musical tonight. Congratulations. I understand you, uh, you told me a little, you gave me a little preview, said yeah. the reviews are good. They are exceptional. I've always wondered, an opening night party for a musical or for a play, do people really sit around and wait for the morning paper to come out and then read it together? Well, usually in this day and age, we have them before the party begins. I so, figured. So uh, you can see that I'm a happy fellow tonight. Sitting in the audience tonight, how did you how did you enjoy the show? Is it easy for you as a, a the primary backer? And yes, yes, it was. I, I enjoyed this show, and I just adore my four stars and the entire cast. They're very special, and they deliver night after night. This was originally staged 21 years ago. Why did you decide this was a good property to uh, to invest in again? In 1975, its time had not quite arrived. Chorus Line, you know, took all the awards that year. It needed maturation. It needed a different period. 1996 has finally been the home and will be the home for Chicago. And you say advanced ticket sales are pretty good, huh? Super, super. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your party, continued success, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you. The music and lyrics of John Kander and Fred Ebb have been longtime Broadway ingredients, sometimes sweet, sometimes spicy, show tunes that will be their legacy. And Bob Fosse has a legacy of his own. Chicago is just one Fosse flavor that is sure to remain a favorite. When we return, we'll learn more about Fosse and how this musical found its legs. I think its time has come. I think the, the original show is ahead of its time. It's, uh, I think, as all great artists, Bob Fosse was ahead of his time, and now the time is here. in New York City, where stars are dancing their way here from the opening of Bob Fosse's musical, Chicago. It's amazing how a musical can bring out happy feet in almost everyone. Let's check it out. right now, Ms. Cheetah Rivera, Mr. Chet Walker, Hi. you're staging a show based on Mr. Fossey's work, right. and you, of course, were in the original production of Chicago right. 21 years ago. Right. I'm very interested in your opinion. Oh, I had a wonderful time. I mean, a, a wonderful work will always survive, and it's great that they have brought it back so that anybody who has never seen it 
will certainly get a chance to see it again in a different form. It is not the same form as we did it 21 years ago. But anything that's brilliant will last forever. And that's, that's what the theater's all about, isn't it? Walter Bobby, who directed the production tonight, and Ann Ryan King were really, um, really trying to pay tribute to Mr. Fossey's legacy. Did they succeed? Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I, um, well, Fosse's style is one of its own. I mean, no one else has a style quite like that. And when you do um, a show like Chicago, I mean, it's made by Bob, and so you have to use that style. So I think they did a good job. I think it's, a, it's, it's hard not to repeat the original, so coming up with a new concept is hard, but I think they did a good job. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can tell by the audience's response, you know. Uh, times change. Things look different. But the brilliance is there, you know, and uh, we had a good time. We really did have a good time. I gotta ask, how come you don't change? You don't look any different. You look wonderful. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I go home and I take it all off. You oh, know? okay. <laughs> we won't go off. into that. I Not won't go there. joking. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. We're done. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the evening. You have too. a good time. You have you lipstick too. on your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> yours. <laughs> Bob Fosse's work took inspiration from some beautiful muses. His third wife, Gwen Verdon, played Roxy Hart in the 1970s version of Chicago. Now, Anne Ryan King, who had long been associated with Fosse, takes Verdon's place in the play. She now is carrying on the legacy of his distinct choreography with the help of Walter Bobby. Walter Bobby directs the latest version of Bob Fosse's 1975 show, Chicago, taking great care to savor Fosse's unique, non-traditional style. I think we have tried to uh, uh, pay tribute to, uh, to his genius as a director and as a choreographer in the theater. And although we are not strictly reviving that production, I think uh, in many ways some of the imaging that we've done throughout the show is sort of classic bossy vocabulary, whether it's visual or choreographic. You know how people have these little problems that they sound like... Fred Ebb and John Cander worked closely with Fosse and continue to add to this vaudeville-like musical with dark themes. In this particular case, I'm co-author of the libretto with uh, Bob Fosse. So as we were writing, uh, the ideas for the song, songs, were also part of our collaboration. A special care was paid to Fosse's dark, minimalistic vision of this jailhouse tale of fame and morality. Fosse. Yeah. He was a minimalist. You know, Fosse did not want to, he wanted to make people look at that. On a Broadway stage, he wanted to see three fingers move. You know, he was an extraordinary uh, minimalist. He always wanted a big black world with, with, uh, with highly imaginative and specific lighting. You know, he was a, just a great, great artist. Longtime friend and co-worker, Anne Ryan King, adds to the blend as choreographer. It's all in basic black, and it's in a black box, very simple set. It's very lean production, uh, as, whereas 20 years ago, it was a very opulent, huge set, many costumes. To honor Bob, the very last number that Bibi and I do in the show is his original choreography. So, so um, it's... It's a, hard, it's a hard assignment, but I hope I did it right. With me right now is taking a sip of water. <laughs> uh, water, very good. Jackie Gleason's kind of water. Actor Richard Kind uh, from Spin City, a veteran of Second City in Chicago. That's right. That's right. And uh, a number of other things. Tell me what you thought of the play. Oh, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It, for those who saw the original, which I am one, I saw the original and I saw it with Gwen Verdon and then I saw it with Liza. This one is completely different. It just... Well, the songs are the same. It's just great. It's a great, great show. It's, and after all the years of knowing Candor and Ebb's songs and hearing them all come back, I, I, you just realize how brilliant it was. It's, it just, and how it, it even more than holds the test of time because of the OJ and the, the Shapiro thing. I'd like to ask you about that. Does it hold up? It's 21 years old now. You saw the original. Uh, is it as timely today? Is it uh, uh, current? I think it, it not just is more timely than when they wrote it, 
it's more timely than when they wrote Roxy Hart, the original play, which was a drama. Uh, with the publicity, and forgive me for saying, but things that you do, uh, that's what it's all about. And we people who now know what's going on, I mean, when I call my mom and she goes, you know, the numbers were down this week, what's gonna happen? I go, Mom, don't talk to me like that. Say, I like the show, don't talk to me numbers. That's what this show is all about now, and I think, I think it's great. Your mother's worried about you, that's She's all. Married. She wants me to keep working, guys. Don't worry, Ma, everything's fine. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Go back, enjoy the party. Good to see you. Now we're going to check out some of the other goings on and folks who are here at the party. The element of surprise always spices up a Broadway bouillabaisse. And imagine the surprise of audiences during the 1970s run of Chicago when, without an announcement, Liza Minnelli stepped in for Gwen Verdon, who was having surgery. More Starfield surprises when we return. Broadway recipe and that doesn't mean how to put together a great hot dog no it really means taking the finest creative ingredients and stirring them together just right then rehearsing for the perfect amount of time and all that chance the road to Broadway can be a tough one in order to get the world hyped for the revival of Chicago the producers used a highly stylized recipe for success it is sexy it's edgy it's interesting I think it really is um, very unlike the majority of ad campaigns for Broadway shows. What's the secret? Create a media blitz with incredible print campaign, provocative television commercials, and prize giveaways. The rules, we handed out 100 keys, and there's one for each of these boxes before we open it, and I think we get two, uh, dinner for two at the Rainbow Room. It was advertised in the newspaper. They said that the first hundred people got underwear. I was planning on being here for box office opening anyway, so I'm like, if I get underwear, that's even better. Add some stars to the show for flavor. Open the box office, ladies and gentlemen, go away! Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. You have time to go sorcerer you are, and then go. Okay, let's do one more time. In between rehearsing and box office stunts, fit in sexy new photo shoot or print ads. It was presented to me with my pictures, which all put together, but they had very uh, aggressive typography to it. It looks really modern for an ad for, um, for a Broadway show. And television. And all that jazz. Well, I was uh, going through first number that I do, all that jazz, a little bit of that, and um, mostly just uh, slinking around like a very guilty murderess. Finally, mix all of the above with incredibly tough deadlines, and you may have a Broadway hit. At least we try very hard to do something more original, and I think you'll find it's, it's very exciting. We've gotten lots of positive comments about it. With me right now, Miss Barbara Walters. You've done a lot of things in front of the camera. Now I'm going to ask you to be theater critic. Oh, okay. Well, that's easy tonight. I loved it. I think it is stylish and, and fun and an enormous hit. I mean, it obviously is, but I think you feel that from the time you come in. So if, if this is, if I could be a theater critic and love everything this much, I'd be very happy. Had you seen the original in 1975? No, I hadn't, but I, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of the music. Um, and I also think that's one of the good things, that it was not a success then, so most people have not seen it. So they're not comparing this or that or the other. It was brand new and fresh. Wonderful it's always nice, always nice talking to you. You're always a delightful interview. You're good on both sides of the microphone. I just wish I could sing and dance. I'll do all that jazz. I wish I could do it. Be nice. Thank you very much. Nice to talk with you. We've danced with the guests, sung with the show stars, but how can we let you go without a sneak peek inside the world of Chicago? As they say in the play, more razzle-dazzle to come.
nice to see Gwen Verdon and Cheetah Rivera in the audience watching Vivi and Ann up on the stage. I mean, that was great. And I, I had gone to the original opening 20-something years ago, and I caught one of the red roses. I was hoping I would catch one tonight. I didn't. But life goes on. Welcome back to the Broadway Bash for the opening night of Chicago. During the 1970s run of the Bob Fosse musical, the show played for 898 performances. After you watch this exclusive scene for the play, you be the judge of how long it'll run this time. Who's that gay sweet? My ex-boyfriend. Why you shoot him? I'm leaving. Was he angry? Like a madman. Still I said, Fred, move along. She knew that she was doing wrong. Then describe it. He came toward me. With a pistol. From my bureau. Did you fight him? Like a tiger. He had strength and she had none. And yet we both reached for the gun. Understandable, understandable, yes, it's perfectly understandable, comprehensible, comprehensible, not a bit reprehensible, it's so defensible. How you feeling? Very frightened. Track, I'd give my life to bring him back. Yeah. Stay away from what? jazz and liquor yeah. and the metal what? flavor fun. Yeah. What? That's the thought that yeah. came upon me yeah. when we both reached for the gun. Oh, I thought the crowd was sensational and very sincere at the same time. I think they really enjoyed seeing the craft that this show offers. It's wonderful. Well, the curtain's about to come down on this production. The cast and other celebrities are still enjoying the party, and I think if someone can revive me, call 911, I'll go in and join them. Remember, if it's happening in entertainment, it's happening right here on E. We'll see you at the next Curtain Call. I'm Steve Kometko. Break a leg. <laughs>